Hi everybody, barriers to entry and exit. This topic area can also be known as sources of monopoly power. Let's start by looking at barriers to entry. So a barrier to entry is any obstacle that prevents a new firm entering a market. Learn these in terms of groups. And to help you with those groups, remember Lloyd's TSB. These are different banks in the UK. They used to be one bank, Lloyd's TSB. They're now separate. But Lloyd's TSB, L for legal barriers to entry, T for technical barriers to entry. These are industry specific barriers. Strategic barriers. This is intimidatory tactics used by firms in the market. And brand loyalty, which is itself a major barrier to entry. So let's take legal barriers first. This is a group of barriers. We then have specific barriers to entry within it, and they are in red here. So we take patents. If you have a patent, that means you uh, have sole ownership of something that you have created, and therefore no other firm can copy you. So if in a market there are lots of patents issued, a new firm may think, Do you know what, how am I going to come in and compete if everybody's protected everything in this market already? So patents is a big source of monopoly power, a major barrier to entry. Licenses and permits. So maybe you need a license or a permit to operate in that market. If all of those have been given out already, then you can't enter. But also if they're very expensive to obtain, if they're very difficult to obtain, then that's going to be a major barrier to entry. Red tape, which is excessive paperwork, excessive bureaucracy, can prevent a new firm coming in. It can take away the incentive to enter a market. If there are excessive standards like product standards, health and safety standards, environmental standards, then it's very costly for a firm to enter the market and to reach those standards, right? So that's going to put off a firm entering the market. But also excessive regulations. Think about you know things like pollution related regulations, regulations over the minimum wages and hiring and firing laws. If you think regulations are very strict, it might stop you entering the market as a firm. And the need for certain insurance as well. So these are all legal barriers to entry. Government uh, originated barriers to entry here. They start from government. Technical barriers are industry specific barriers, barriers to entry to do with something within the industry. For example, there might be very high startup costs. There might be very high sunk costs. Sunk costs are costs which cannot be recovered when a firm leaves the market. So two good examples of these are advertising and very, very specialist machinery. So when you leave the market, you can't recover those costs. Advertising you've already paid for, you can't recover it. And when it comes to specialist machinery, you can't sell it on because it's so specialist to you, the business. So very high sunk costs increase the risk of entering a market, knowing you can't recover those costs if you leave and therefore can act as a barrier to entry, stopping a new firm entering the market here. Economies of scale. Yes, yeah, so firms have got very high economies of scale in the market already, very low average costs and thus can price low. It might scare off new firms who can't grow to such a size and get the same economies of scale straight away. And also a natural monopoly market where it makes once where it makes sense for just one firm to operate in the market. If a new firm was to enter that market, they could be driven out very easily and under cost on price. So these are all technical barriers, industry specific barriers. We then have strategic barriers. So this is when firms in the market already known as incumbent firms act in a very threatening way. For example, they predatory price. That's pricing lower on purpose to drive out competition. And that lower price could even be making a loss for that firm. But they do it to drive out competitors. Limit pricing where firms price at normal profit or break even to limit competition into the market, taking away the incentive to enter if there is only normal profit being made. But also heavy advertising. So any of these dirty tactics being played by firms can definitely scare off new firms into the market. And then we have brand loyalty. Brand loyalty is its own major barrier to entry. Imagine entering a market where consumers are very loyal to different businesses. Then that can scare you thinking that you're probably not going to be able to compete with those guys because of strong brand loyalty. So very high barriers to entry can stop new firms entering the market, but are also sources of monopoly power. Bear that in mind. But as are barriers to exit. So a barrier to exit is just any obstacle that prevents a firm leaving a market. Obstacles such as the undervaluation of assets. So maybe you as a business, when you bought your assets initially, as you're looking to leave the market, you're getting a price much lower. And you're thinking, oh, that's terrible. So you hold on for a while instead of leaving the market straight away. High redundancy costs, so these are costs you have to pay to your workers as a result of shutting down. If they're very high, you might be convinced to continue for a bit. If you have penalties for leaving contracts early, so this could be contracts with your suppliers, it could be rent contracts, gas electricity contracts, whatever contracts a firm is in, if you're leaving them early, there could be very high penalties involved. Again, a reason maybe not to leave straight away, but to continue. And also, like I say, if you've got very high sunk costs, costs which you can't recover when you leave the market, you might stay in for a while 
um, just to hold off before you leave the market there. So these are barriers to exit as well as some major barriers to entry. Both are sources of monopoly power. That should cover it now. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I'll see you all in the next video. Mm -hmm.